Hello my friends, how are you doing? Affinity Photo 1.8 is out and in this video we're gonna cover the nitty, the gritty, the ugly and the pretty, just everything. My name is Olivio, I'm a professional designer, let's get started right away. So there have been some cool changes, there have been some changes I'm not a big fan of, so let's go over them and see what you actually need to know about this update. So the first one is we have a new di a dialog for new documents. So go on File, New, and there you have the new dialog here, it says New Documents, and we have presets now. We had them before, but now they are in this kind of visual format. and um, Personally, I have to say I'm not a big fan of that because the reason is you have to look at all of these boxes. They are visually exactly the same, so they don't give you any information. So you have to read all these kind of details. And as you see, it's a long list. You have to scroll through that. So it's kind of a lot harder to find things than before where we had just a pop down list with all the names of the presets. That was a lot easier. So. I'm not much of a fan of this kind of change. You can see when you click here, the information over here on the right side changes. So you can see all the different changes that are going on when you click on that. And you have print, print ready, photo, web, devices, architectural, and then you also have your own presets. There you can save the stuff that you need the most. So this is probably now the best way to get to the presets that you actually need. Okay, there is the next change and I'm a really big fan of this one. It's called templates and you can add your own folders. You can also create your own templates. You can also like import templates or like save templates from other files that you found online. For example, these templates here are from my mock-up pack. I will link it in the video description. You can check it out on my Gumroad store. There's a free version, also premium versions, blah, 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 blah. Let's not go into that right now. You can see we have these templates here. And if you double click on them, they just open up and you can work with them. They are like master files. You can see here, I have all the different layers with the settings. So it's kind of complex, all this kind of stuff I created here. Um, so yeah, you have this and you can simply say the way you do this is very easy. Go over to file and down here it says export as template and then save it into the folder of your choice. I would personally suggest don't save all of the templates in just one folder. Make different folders that have a certain name that you can use here. So you have different categories of templates. So it's not getting confusing over time. Again, I want to voice a little bit of critique. The thing here is these files are saved as AF template files, but they are exactly the same as AF photo files. And the cumbersome thing here is you have to now open all of your AF photo files that you want to have as templates and save them again through the export dialog as templates. Why not just allow me to import AF photo files as templates and I can just import a hundred different templates. Now I have to go to each one, one by one. Not so good, but you can do it. And I'm a fan of this function. It just needs a little bit of improvement. And also because it is an AF template file, you now have two files that are exactly the same on your hard disk. I use a little bit more of memory, could be better. Anyways, let's go on to the other changes that we have in here. And the next one is one I have waited for for ages. And this is that you can open up Photoshop files with smart objects and the smart objects will be converted in as good as Affinity Photo can do. Uh, this is based on if Affinity Photo has these kind of functions and features that have been used by creating the smart object in Photoshop, of course. If Affinity Photo can't do it, of course, it can't open it in that way. So. If you want to have this functionality, the important thing here is that you go to Edit, Preferences, General, and then make a hook here where it says Import PSD Smart Objects where possible. This already tells you it's not possible in all the cases, but it tries as good as it can and 
many cases. Okay, cool. So what is a smart object and how is this different? Well, um, I just want to show you a little bit of how this works. So you go inside here, for example, with this one, and let's go, you can see here, we have the right picture, we have the left picture. So let's click on this one. And as you can see here, this is the image basically, which is an embedded document and you have a perspective life filter on this. So even though this looks 3D here, it's actually 2D in the file. So when you double click on the embedded document, let's do this, you can see this opens up again because it is an embedded document, it has the uh, layers inside. There was just a little warning about me not having the font that was used here. That is not a problem, you can use your own fonts. Let's select a part here, for example, this one, um, this shape, it's an ellipse. You can change the fill color. Let's do this real quick, change it to blue. And then if we switch over to the other document, this is implemented and also in the right perspective with the effects over that as it should be with the mock-up. So this is really amazing. And now you can use Photoshop mock-ups in Affinity Photo. This is really, really helpful as good as possible. Sometimes it doesn't work. So always try the product out if there is a test version, if it actually works with your Affinity Photo or not. So that's important to remember. Okay, another thing that is probably very important for a lot of photographers there. Oh, look at this beautiful guy here in front of Buckingham Palace in London because it was on VidCon just telling you. Yeah, so <laughs> let's not look at the picture too much. Um, we have now a lot more ability to change and edit metadata. So to see that you have to open up the tab for metadata. The way you do this is you go to view and then to studio and over here you can see metadata. And here we have a lot of stuff. So you can edit stuff for your file like title, author, author, title, description, all that stuff for that file. Then you have your EXIF data. Then you have your EPTC image data where you can also edit a lot of stuff, headline, location, city, region, country, all the kind of things you can enter here. This is probably more important if you sell your pictures online, stuff like that to put it in here. Then you can also have IPTC contact information like the address, city, region, zip code, all these kind of things again. And you have the rights in here. Like I said, more important if you want to sell your pictures or put them online for public domain. So you have a choice here for public domain. And also, well, they have a lot of details here also and raw data information if you need that. I don't know. For the nerds. <laughs> so, this is very nice to have this kind of ability. It's very in-depth, I would say. So that's pretty cool. Let's go on to the next feature and that is edit plugin support. So for example, Nick collection is now fully integrated and supported with Affinity Photo. There shouldn't be any more problems using Nick, Nick collections, which by the way, I want to do um, tutorials on. Let me know if you're interested in tutorials about Nick Collection. And the other thing is that now we have raw support for Canon RC3 format. Personally, I am a, a Nikon guy, so I can't test that, but the support is here. Check it out. Let me know in the comments how well that works. There is one more important change that you want to look at and these are shortcuts that you now can edit to your own taste, which is a very important feature. To find that, again, go to edit, then preferences and here click on keyboard shortcuts and you can see now we have this nice list and you can edit your own functions in here for your own taste in the way you want to use it and that feels best to your workflow. I hope you liked that video. If you have more questions, if you need any more information, let me know in the comments. Thank you very much for watching and see you soon. Bye.